unceded territory of Muscat people. I come where I am now. I have the enormous generosity of the Saanich people to have welcomed me to that territory. There are four First Nations in my riding, the Saanich Gulf Islands. Uh, one of them is uh, Sartlip, where Adam Olson is a member of that First Nation, and you probably all know he's interim leader of the Green Party of British Columbia. Uh, you know, we're the only party of the traditional parties. Now, I actually can describe the Green Party as one of the, the big parties. We got, two, we got two MPs in the House of Commons, and that's, um, that's great. We will soon have many more. But we're the only of the main parties that's ever had a First Nations person lead a party. There's been an Indian party that has had, of course, but, uh, and we don't even make any, don't think about it much. But when I think about uh, Adam Olson as a, as a dear friend of mine, like a brother to me, and amazing, uh, I was at an event on Monday where Chief Don Tom, uh, Chief of Sartlet First Nation, talked about green values and that the Saanich people were, and I, I'm all, it's really hard to repeat this without sounding, it's just overwhelming to me, but they really felt that in Ottawa, my voice was representing their values. And that's how I think you're feeling now, Audrey, of what it would be like to have Lynn Corby be your voice in Ottawa, to represent this community, this constituency, work for you as the Member of Parliament from this new riding of Burnaby North Seymour. We as Greens have a whole different approach to politics. We don't think it's about politics, we think it's about democracy. These are very different attitudes. We see too many political parties wasting a lot of their time and energy trying to kneecap each other, gain a little bit of electoral ground, short-term partisan advantage, overtaking what's important for Canada. We had an event in my riding on Monday, an amazing thing. I mean, I was, you know, we had 900 people show up because the Right Honorable Joe Clark spoke at a Green Party event. Now wrap your mind around that sentence. Uh, and as I thanked him, I said, you know, it was wonderful to have someone here who uh, was not yet a member of the Green Party. So he, he chuckled, because he has no political party. He never joined the Conservatives after the uh, Reform Alliance takeover. Anyway, one of the things that he said there was that we need members of Parliament. He actually said we need more members of Parliament, like not me, uh, who will put Parliament ahead of the party. This is what I mean about our commitment is to democracy, to working for our constituents as hard as we can, ethically, honestly, we can make mistakes, but we will be working in your interests and we are open to your ideas. I hold town hall meetings in my riding. I'm just, by tomorrow night on Saturna, We'll have completed nine town hall meetings in the last couple of weeks. We do them twice a year. It's the way I find out what my bosses want me to do. So my boss is the people in my community. It's a very different approach. We don't have whipped votes. So you'll hear people talking about how, what difference do Green MPs make? So I'm going to tell you the difference we make as a group, as a caucus, and then I'll talk about the difference Lynn will make. Here's how the next election is likely to go, and you need to think about this, hang on to it, and explain it to other people. It's likely to be a minority parliament. No party is going to win a majority of the seats. It's very likely. I don't think there's any chance of Stephen Harper's party doing well at all. But either the Liberals or the NDP will have a minority of the seats. Nobody will have a majority. Now, we know what happened between 2006 and 2011 only because the Liberals and the NDP couldn't stand to work with each other, Stephen Harper was Prime Minister from 2006 to 2011. And in that time, he canceled all our climate plans, he canceled the Coloma Accord, he canceled universal child care. He started the process of destroying our environmental laws. You know, the worst of the laws was C-38, and he didn't get away with that omnibus bill until he had a majority. But he did a lot of damage to environmental assessment and did a lot of damage to the National Energy Board Act in the period when he only had a minority by playing one party off against the other, knowing that they wouldn't want to go to an election until they felt they were ready, had enough money saved up. It's not that I blame any of the individual members of Parliament with whom I work. They're wonderful people, frankly, in all the parties. They're quite wonderful people. They get pulled into political life because somebody goes to them and says, look, you're a great community leader. 
You'd be wonderful as the member of parliament for the conservatives or the liberals or the new democrats, fill in the blank. And they're earnest. They, they're not running for, I would, in public impression of politicians to the contrary, the people I know in public life and the MPs I know in parliament did not take on this challenge because they wanted to get rich or because they were planning to be corrupt. They took on the talent challenge because they love Canada and they think they can do something good. And it's not till after they've won their seat that, they're, that they go to whatever training each party calls it. They generally call it boot camp. And that's where the newly elected members of parliament are told, here's the deal. You do what you're told. You do not say what you're thinking or what your constituents want you to say. We're going to give you a script and you're going to read it. And we're going to tell you how to vote. And if you don't vote the way you're told, you'll be punished. Now that is really horrific for good people. So we want to change the whole culture of parliament. We just don't guarantee that Green Party members of parliament won't have whipped votes, or that Green Party members of parliament will represent their constituents. With enough Greens elected, none of the other parties will be able to get away with it anymore. It will fundamentally change the way that parliament functions, restore respect within parliament, reduce the power of the Prime Minister's office. That's a key goal, that must be done. Get rid of first past the post, and one of the things that would have made all the difference in 2006 when there was that minority conservative <coughs> rule by Stephen Harper would have been a lot of Green MPs. Yeah, less than the other parties, okay. But enough to say, no way should Stephen Harper be Prime Minister with a minority of support across Canada. The majority of Canadians want climate action. The majority of Canadians elected a majority of members of Parliament in the New Democratic Party, the Liberal Party, and the Bloc, why aren't we working together? Because that's what Canadians would want. Well, we know why they don't. They don't they're not willing to, over, to overcome this hyper-partisan nonsense. So, number one, this election is going to change everything. Because we can and will elect a lot of Green members of Parliament. And one of them will be Lynn Cormie. Yeah. Because, as Audrey was saying, Lynn is a protector. Lynn put herself on the line. Kinder Morgan sued Lynn for $5 million. Did she quake and go into her home and shut the door and go into the closet and have a few quiet sobs? No. She said, okay, if they're going to sue me anyway, I might as well get arrested. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that I've never been arrested. I think that condition will soon end, but in any case, I, I uh, when Lynn got arrested, I said to my staff, I was in Ottawa, and I said, gee, can I get there in time to join her at Burnaby Mountain and get arrested? Well, it might interfere with going to Lima for the climate negotiation, so depending, in any case, I am overwhelmed by the courage, the energy, the passion, the brilliance of someone who spent her life working in science and then sees that the system in which we're living right now has decided that science is dangerous because it informs us to make wise choices. So we muzzle the scientists, we gag the scientists, we fire the scientists. We want to go boldly forth under Stephen Harper's agenda with putting all our economic eggs in the bitumen basket and think that somehow the wealth at the top of the 1% is justification for leaving behind the 99%. So social justice gets ignored, fairness gets ignored, the climate crisis gets ignored. Local democratic rights of a community like Burnaby to say no to Kinder Morgan get ignored. Now's the time to stand up. And Lynn Cormie, to my eternal amazement and gratitude, has stood up. She will be your next member of parliament. Think about how wonderful that would be. There is no MP in this riding now. There is no incumbent. 